2019, Prime Minister Prime Minister Lee Hsien Loong at the time said that we were going to be setting aside 100 billion dollars over 100 years to manage the risk of climate change. I can say that's not enough. What's your not estimate? Enough. Are you putting me on the spot? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no comment on that, but uh, 100 billion will be a lower end of the estimate. Do you, do you think we are adequately prepared for sea level rise, global warming, etc., etc., in Singapore? We're still not going to reach net zero without more action. We are protecting ourselves by putting plasters or band-aids onto a cut that we have. But the problem is that we are going to deal with more cuts in the future. And at some point of time, you are going to run out of plasters and you're going to run out of band-aids. So what you need to do is stop the person who's cutting you in the first place from, from causing the harm. So while we are, we can spend money, we can have the best sort of uh, tech and investment tools, the best regulations to put into place to protect us, we still need more effort in terms of the other side of reaching net zero, of reducing our emissions as best as we can. 100 billion is not enough, what's your not estimate? Enough. Are you putting me on the spot? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no comment on that, but uh, 100 billion will be a lower end of the estimate, I would think. In that particular news article that I mentioned about, uh, when Prime Minister Lee said 100 billion, he also said we need to have a strong armed forces, which led me to think maybe the two are related, right? One is protecting our coastal, uh, putting up coastal defences, yep. and also having armed defences. <laughs> almost sounds like two are related. What's your take it, on that? It, it is like an existential threat. So he was making a good analogy that we need to, you know, to deal with climate change, it needs a whole of government uh, action initiative like the Singapore Armed Forces. But there's a hidden side to that as well. Uh, this is something that um, has happened and then there's a bit of literature that looks into the role of the once in a generational drought that happened in 2010 uh, in Syria that drove disaffected youths from the farmlands, from places where they could not find work or sell crops into urban areas and they became destabilised and that was one of the seeds for Arab Spring which you might remember took place 10 years ago and led to a lot of conflict ever since. So that is that risk that, that the risk of climate drives or the possibility of destabilizing um, potentially fractious geopolitical events is something that we as climate scientists are very 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 cognizant of and are very worried about as well and I'm, I'm sure that will also have ramifications for what you need to do